Greetings, YouTube viewers. Long time no see, eh? Well, I'm here with my good friend and girlfriend, Sarah Bat, Monday of Left of Awesome, to talk to you about the inanity of Republican allegations that the Obama administration is instituting socialism, and that somehow prior to the bailouts, or prior to Obama's administration, or prior to some arbitrary point in time, America was a free market utopia. This sentiment was echoed by Congressman Michelle Bachman of my old district in Minnesota when she said on a right-wing radio program that was hosted by North Dakota talk radio host Scott Hennon, and what we saw this Tuesday, once the president signed the health care bill at the 11th hour in the morning on Tuesday, that affected 51% government takeover of the private economy. It is really quite sobering what has happened. From 100% of our economy was private prior to September of 2008, but as of Tuesday, the federal government has now taken ownership of control of 51% of the private economy. Okay, first of all, where did you get those numbers? Okay, what, what do you have to say? <laughs> I, the, it's just, on top of being completely stupid, it's also poorly phrased. Like, the fact that she said Tuesday so many times just makes everything so much more awkward. That, that, that's... This is what we found out on Tuesday, because in the 11th hour, on Tuesday. <laughs> but as of Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, it, it is pretty ridiculously phrased. What's particularly absurd about this is, you know, Bachman is a beneficiary of farm subsidies from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which, you know, is a massive market distortion. And, of course, she wouldn't call the USDA socialist, because all it's doing is subsidizing private business, so it's really a public loss, private gain socialism, and then regulating business. And that's really all the health care bill does. Now certainly, like the U.S. Department of Agriculture, you could argue that it will have market distortions which will have detrimental effects. But to call it socialism, or to call it public ownership, is to defame both the bill and public ownership and socialism, because they're not the same thing, and proponents of one have a tendency to despise the other. So the definition of socialism anyway <laughs> any of various economic and political theories advocating collective or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and dis distribution of goods a system of society or group living in which there is no private property a system or condition of society in which the means of production are owned and controlled by the state or a stage of society in Marxist theory transitional between capitalism and communism and distinguished by unequal distribution of goods and pay according to work done. Now, now does Obama-style economic policy match any of those? Not, not quite. Not, not, not what I was thinking. I, I think that we need... Conservatives are certainly welcome to critique Obama's economic policies because it's not as though they're particularly brilliant or anything. But if they're going to critique them, they need to do so in ways that make sense and actually follow conventional definitions of social and political things. Yeah, that would generally be useful, which is why it's kind of nice to have people like Timothy Carney out there, who's a conservative libertarian, but his book, Obamanomics, never accuses the administration of socialism. It simply documents how their particular policies give disproportionate benefits to specific corporations. And so he takes a well-reasoned, logical approach and never accuses Obama of socialism because that would be idiotic. He approaches it as corporatism, which is what it is, and it's what Bush did, and it's simply a standard economic policy that's been in place in America for years. Now, you can argue it's bad economic policy. I certainly do so, but intellectual honesty is pretty paramount here. Well, I guess not to the pundits. You you, you have to remember that the conservatives generally in a, aren't aren't very intellectual. Or honest. No, at all. Yeah, not not Ever. a particular. Definitely not their strong point at all. So, another weird thing about the whole one hundred percent private ownership prior to September is, didn't the conservatives try to blame the? economic collapse largely on things like Annie Mae and Freddie Mac, you know, government chartered banks that caused a lot of destabilization and, you know, those wouldn't count as private ownership, but they existed prior to the September of 2008. 
But but they only look at facts when it actually benefits their um their their own agenda. They, yeah. They don't care about them the rest of the time. Yeah, confirmation bias has a tendency to rear its ugly head a lot of the time, unfortunately. So 